I'm going to call us to order. I um, apologize for not sitting up front. Uh, and the Hartsville Trousdale County Water and Sewer Utility Board uh, work session today is to discuss the 20 year master plan. Um, and we've asked Mr. Evan White to bring a proposal of uh, just to kind of get us started. This is not the final, this is just uh, where we're going and where we're headed in this uh, conceptual design for the next 20 years for Trousdale County and Hartsville. Mr. Evan, you have the floor. All right, thank you. I'll get started. I had a pointer, but it probably ain't gonna work. So we'll be using my mouse, I guess, on some of this. So y'all ask us to do a 20 year plan. Um, I'm gonna go through what we're gonna provide. If there's something that y'all uh, have in your minds that is not in this uh, table of contents here, please let me know. I think I've took into account, this is typically what you see in a master plan, but if there's something y'all wanna see a little bit more in depth, uh, let me know. Um, I can read through them since some of y'all can't see, but we're gonna be giving you the master plan goals, basically what the, why are we doing this? Uh, the population and water use, the projected water use, um, basically that is how you think the water is going to be used, whether it's wholesale, residential, commercial, industrial. We'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, your actual water supply, uh, your existing water treatment plant, your surface waters you're getting. Y'all don't have any groundwater, but we're still going to talk about it. Um, uh, recommend recommendations on your supply and treatment plan uh, and any immediate recommendations. That's kind of like a summary of this entire, well, there's a few more uh, distribution system evaluation, capital improvement plans. That's anything you're going to do in the next 20 years and a financial plan, how you're going to pay for it in the next 20 years. So this will kind of be the very, uh, it'll be a summary of the other, I think there's nine chapters that'll be in this. So there'll be an introduction uh, that'll get into the financials, uh, system description of your entire system, the service area that y'all are and the population that it's served. Again, a lot of this is going to go back to your summary, but um, this is the actual chapter that'll be talking in depth about it. Water use, water supply, your water treatment plant, your distribution system, your service zones, your storage tanks, your pump stations, and your distribution pipes. Um, your water use history, uh, what y'all have trended over the years, what your average summer and winter demands are, what your peaking factors are, what your historical per capita demands are, uh, what your historical consumption has been, uh, and that's residential. Right now, all you've got is residential uh, as far as the way y'all bill, and you got historical unaccounted for water, so water loss, we'll talk about that. Your water use proje uh, projections, this is where you get in the 20 year planning, your build out plan, your population de forecasting, uh, developable land and uh, build out population. So we're gonna look at places in Trousdale County we think would develop. Uh, a lot of this is a uh, magic eight ball type thing you have to do. You kinda, uh, there's some things that you can see possibly getting developed if this 141 project comes in. I, uh, I would not be surprised if it don't develop up and down where it's going uh, in the next 20 years, if they build it in that time. Uh, you've got uh, projection criteria, demand projections for the next 20 years. Your water treatment plant, we're going to get into the treatment uh, technology that you have right now. Uh, what the evaluation of the existing plan is, basically what your intake can do, what your uh, water pumps do, your coagulant mixing, your flocculation, your settling, your filtrations, uh, your filter pipe gallery, we just had it painted, but we're gonna go through all those systems. So I'm not gonna bore you with everything that's involved in that. What the existing capacity is, um, your summary of the assessment of it. We're gonna get into the surface waters, uh, basically the river, uh, what happens if you, there's any spills, uh, land use, that's basically the land use that's around the surface waters. Uh, 
We'll skip on down now to the groundwater. Basically, y'all don't have any, but we're still going to talk about it in here. Distribution system, we're going to look at uh, the potable water system, your distribution regulations, what the state of Tennessee says you have to maintain and do. Uh, your planning criteria, of course, we've built a model and it's going to tell you how the demands was allocated and the calibration, uh, the valuation of that, your storage tanks, uh, basically how many tanks you've got when they last rehabbed, when they need to be rehabbed next, what items on them need to be rehabbed in the next 20 years. Uh, same thing with your pump stations, uh, makes, models, uh, how they are, if they're going to need to be replaced, uh, and your piping network, if there's any uh, findings we find there as far as something that needs to be addressed um, in the next 20 years to make the system uh, better. Okay, now we're going to move on down to the distribution improvements, basically your water treatment plant location, storage, and pipelines. Capital improvement plans, again, uh, it kind of speaks for itself. That's a plan all in its own, but it's anything you're going to plan on doing in the next 20 years uh, in the projected cost background. And the financial plans uh, for all the bean counters, this is where you look at all y'all's revenue that's coming in, what your expenses are going out. Uh, rate, what you need to do about your rate impacts, your rate comparisons, and development charges, uh, cost basis, and capacity requirements. Um, so financials is a lot of it. Uh, there's a lot of things we can say that's going to happen in 20 years, but how are you going to pay for it? So that's what we plan on providing y'all in the in this master plan. If there's anything that I didn't touch on that you feel like needs to be, uh, let me know. We'll try to adopt it before the final. <clears throat> I'll stop right now if you want to butt in. Go for it. Go for it. That's why it's a work question. Regulations, are you getting into any anticipated regulations from the feds or the state? Do we, do we have any foreknowledge of anything that might be happening in that respect? No, the only thing we look at is the current uh, design criteria set forth by the TDEC at this time. Um, they don't ever let us know what they're planning on doing if they're imp implement uh, anything. So Tommy might have a Tommy would probably have more uh, insight on that with TUAD than I would. A lot of times they stay on top of what's coming down the path. No, just the current design criteria on your water system. So if there's something that you have to meet, we would look at the at a plant meeting that or a distribution system meeting it. Um, of course, right now you've got water turnover that you got to do. You've got to meet certain chlorine residuals uh, in your system. Uh, you've got to have 24 hours worth of fire protect uh, tank storage. So all that stuff is what we're going to talk about. So in it, the only thing I would add to that is the the current plant. If they ever reduce the uh, turbidity limit down to 0.15, which they talk about, it probably ain't gonna meet it consistently. That, that's the kind of, that's basically kind of what I wonder. But, but that's why we're looking at the new facility. To, it will meet it, so. What kind, of, what kind of timeline do they typically give you? It's usually not immediately for such um, requirements, is it? Well, I forget, they, they lowered it to 0.3 uh, probably 15 years ago. So, but they've been threatening the 0.15 for ever since, you know, so it, it could, it's just when they get the, when they get around to wanting to do that, it's, it's on their timetable, whatever that is. But that, that was about 15 years ago. One thing I keep seeing, uh, energy consumption levels on things being regulated that have never been regulated before. I didn't know whether that was anything that, that could be an issue going forward as far as uh, the energy efficiency of our plant or our pumps or things of that nature. I didn't know. I see, I see the feds dropping that just almost seems like weekly, monthly uh, in some areas. Yeah, um, they're concentrating hard on that. Uh, basically, what they're doing right now is they give you credits, in other words, or 
uh, you can get more um, loan or loan forgiveness if you do a green project. That's what they're calling it. So if you can prove that you're uh, lowering your footprint there with the project you're doing, you could technically get a little bit more free money, I guess you could say, in that, that stance right now. They're not making you do it, uh, but they will give you credit in, in that form if you're borrowing money. <clears throat> Anybody else got anything? So the graph that you got in front of you, uh, most of this PowerPoint is going to be graphs and data, and then we're going to talk about how you want us to um, implement this data that we've we've collected. So this is MORs. So this is reports that have to go to the state of Tennessee on a monthly basis. We've taken all those from January of 2017 till January uh, 1st of 2022. And this is the water that has been treated. This is in the dark blue and water that has been pumped um, to the system is in the light blue. And um, if my mouse will work, cause I can't get the laser to. If you can tell about 2020, you had an abrupt change. Um, I'll let Tommy talk a little bit about this, but I think some of it was under the assumptions, maybe the meters at the plant was causing this, or if y'all truly had this kind of usage. Um, we're basing it off the data we have. So we're basing this off the trends that we're seeing in this graph here. Um, typically you're treating about 1 million gallons a day on average, somewhere thereabouts. You've got a 2 million gallon hydraulic capacity of your treatment plant. But you can tell that a lot of the time, uh, ever since 2020, you're treating about 1.6 to 1.7 at times. Sometimes you're, you're treating a little higher, uh, close to two. So the state has come in and said that you're at 80%. So that is their red flag that you've got to do something. Um, there again, if, if it was the meters that's causing this, this spike all of a sudden, uh, of course the data started to come back down over here after the first of the year, but it started to go back up again. <clears throat> so if, if it did fix it, then the data would, would need to reflect that, I guess, with, but it won't be in this report because I'm having to use the history. If, if, if you go back and check it and the meter does check that it was reading too high, will these numbers be adjusted back to, like if it was, you know, whatever the difference was, will these numbers be adjusted back down for that difference? Uh, usually the way flow meters work, you can't just do a percentage they was off or something and adjust them. So basically this data from 2020 to 2022 ish would have to be throughout and you could trend, you know, 17, 18, 19, 20, and then maybe jump to this year, you know, to see, uh, it's the only way you could really do it. You'd have to throw out the bad data instead of adjusting it. So again, this is all based on, um, the data that we have. So the yellow that you see there is y'all's population by UT. Uh, UT does these population uh, projections. And you can tell that in 20 years, they say that y'all's demand for non-peak. So um, I guess I need to talk a little bit about the, the peak factor. Um, we're gonna look at those. I don't have those all calculated yet, but you're gonna have an average flow, which is what this is. This is 75% of your normal flow um, for these years, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Um, we don't have 22 yet. So you can tell um, what the average was doing there. Those numbers are realistic um, right down here. These are realistic to date. All Anything from this point on is projected. But UT says y'all are going to have a 14% increase, which we do not feel like is adequate. So they're saying you're going to go from about a 1.4 MGD to a 5.1.58 uh, MGD. If we base a projected plant on 
2018 to 2021 data that's in red and you do a linear um, interpretation, you're looking at about a 2.9. If we do it from 17's data to 21, and if you can tell there's a jump down here in the data, um, right in here. So it kind of it kind of messes up the red one. Uh, that's why we threw the bad data out. But if you have 17 to 21's data, you can see it says you're going to need about a 3 million plant. This is non-peak, so that's important. Um, so you've got an average um, daily demand you're going to have of water that you normally treat, but there's going to be days in July and August that you're going to use quite a bit more, and that's what your peak is. So, And there'll be a peak factor there. You basically take the the most water that you use up out of the year and divide it by your average and that gives you your your peak number so that's important to know what your peak numbers are trending in order to forecast uh, down the road but we'll get into that uh, not in it'll be in the report but it won't be in this presentation <clears throat> the next line you see is a 75 percentile average daily flow that's what we feel like because population is usually on a polynomial type curve or exponential uh, uh, type curve turn backwards. Uh, you usually don't do populations based on linear interpretations except for UT. So uh, that's why we feel like it's low. Um, and plus the people that's exiting Nashville, we can't really um, realistically see know what that population is, but we do know it's happening on a on a with our own two eyes uh, living here. So our projections are, if you go off that line, that your plant should be a 1.99 in 20 years. So you'd at least need a 2 million average uh, plant with a peak. So our projections right now is you need at least a 3 million gallon a day plant. Uh, I do want you to realize that this has nothing to do with um, any outside source wanting more water. So any of your utility districts or municipalities that y'all sell to, if all of a sudden they wanted another million gallons, that would not be included in, in our projections here. Um, this is only based on population projections on demand since you're at 80% 80, 80 now. This is the same graph you can see and we talked about peaking factors. Um, so you can see in 2041 that we're saying you need about a 2.68. Let's round it up for good math. 3 million plant is what this is projecting out to see. You can see what your peaking factors are, right? Basically, uh, right now and what you're running on average. Uh, 21, you is running on average 1.51 MGD on a 2 million gallon plant. The year before 2020, you was running 1.5. Four nine, um, and then all of a sudden you can tell, like I said, in the jump in the other graph, you was running about one point three. So all of a sudden, y'all gain two hundred thousand more gallons of demand uh, or leaking, however you want to look at that. <laughs> so it goes hand in hand. Either you're leaking more water, or or you are selling more water, or the meters was off. Something made that jump, uh, or you had that much population uh, change in those times. So. Um, that's something we're going to look at and, and be sure of. Um, but that's about 200,000 more gallons from what we've gathered on the leak report that Tommy uh, does and turned into y'all. I mean, it pretty much has been running steady the whole time. So I don't feel like there's uh, the leaks causing the jump. So now this is what you don't want to know. Um, so this is how we pay for things. If right now plants are averaging $5 a, a, a gallon to build a plant. So if you built um, a 3 million gallon plant, you're looking about 15 million. Uh, our proposal along with talking with Tommy would be to build one a little bit larger than three, but you can put trains in them. So in other words, you build it to be about a, you could build about a 5 million gallon plant, but you only have the equipment to treat three so let's for common math purposes let's say 20 million that's what we've turned it on on grants for y'all and uh, for federal federal funding 
you can tell now what kind of increase uh, the blue would be a rate increase as you see it right now if you used to uh, get a 20 million dollar loan for four percent over 40 years uh, and you can see your payments about a million dollars a year just for the plant um, in this report we haven't talked about y'all uh, buying water um, that may be something y'all want to look at or if you just want to um, since you're sitting on the Cumberland, I would suggest um, getting it yourself, but that's always an option. You could buy water to supplement your, in your demand um, that you have right now. So uh, right now you're breaking, you're breaking even right now. I think you're making oh, roughly uh, $190,000 is about where y'all are at. Um, and you can see your total expenses line. I'll try to explain this the best I can. And, we're, and there'll be a table further after this. Um, this 2026 is when we said a plant would be implemented. So that's why the expenses go up uh, and during this time. And over 10 years, we're gonna do some, some water line extensions was in this too. So that's kind of why it goes for 10 and jumps back down. But if you have a 4% population growth, um, you can tell with no increase, you're, you're gonna be uh, in the red. Um, if you do a 40%, this is just, we're just throwing stuff out here so y'all can see it. We've got plenty of charts. Um, but you can tell even with 2% increase, it'll take you to like 2036 or 2037. In other words, if 2% more population is added between now and then, uh, at that rate increase, it would cover the cost of the projects that we've got listed that you'll see here shortly. If you've got 4%, you can tell where you'd be too. So it, uh, it's a pretty good visual to see what would happen. Um, and then we're going to talk uh, more about the, boy, I was hoping y'all could see this one, but you're not going to be able to. My eyes are pretty good, I guess, so I'll try to explain it. So right here is your total water operating uh, system. Uh, I don't know if I can on a PowerPoint. <laughs> Oh, you're good. Y'all need to see it because y'all are going to ask me what's included in all this. 
So right here's what your total operating water expenses are without notes payable, uh, about 3.5. You got your notes payable and interest payments. Uh, this is water only. Um, so these numbers are gonna change. I've talked to Tommy right now, y'all are putting water and sewer together. Usually when you try to do these studies, you do, of course, we're gonna study only water and only sewer. Um, in this, y'all sewer plant was last revised in 17 to 18. So you really don't have nothing there except for some I and I will talk about uh, before the slideshow's over, but um, that's where we're at. So right here, you can see uh, this is being, this is a projection or a forecast is what you're fixing to start seeing. This is 21's real numbers, 22 is projected um, of the expenses. Uh, as you can tell in 23, we're hoping the water storage tank would be built. Um, and then you're gonna start depreciating. We've added the water tank O and M. So basically every, every year you're gonna spend two grand on uh, water tanks, uh, give or take. Um, I know some years he's got to have them inspected. So you'll have a little bit more there, but some of this is already in your regular expenses. Um, so you double up in, in some items. Water booster pumps, we didn't add nothing. Now this is all by the years over here. Uh, let me go back up. That's 2023 by itself only. So water tanks added, water lines added, O and M water line extension. So if y'all remember the list I gave y'all on the feasibility study, there was, uh, I took the top 10 roads and that's what this is. This is what it cost to do the very first road on that list. Um, so then you get down here on the next one, uh, the tank's built. Now you're paying interest, you're paying the principal, you're paying the depreciation, uh, you're paying for a water tank to be rehabbed. Uh, not, that, not the new tank, but something in the system. You're paying to have a water booster station uh, added. Uh, you're paying for a water line, uh, just O and M on the water lines, and this is the next road, so road number two. Um, and you keep going. So we've got um, the roads, the top ten roads added. We've got water booster stations we feel like needs to be changed. Um, we've got. Um, water tanks that have to be rehabbed per TDEX requirements. All of that was um, included in your um, rate study that, that you're not really a rate study, but just the overall expenses that you can see you're gonna to have to find a way to pay for in the next 20 years. Um, I could go on with that list, but it's the same thing. It's just every year we're adding another water line extension. Um, and all this will be in a final report to y'all. All right, so in 2026, this is what we're projecting um, your expenses to be and how they're made up. So by 2026, we expect you to have about 4.3 million with no payments, just uh, that's what your expenses would be just for water. Uh, again, let's remember sewer ain't included in this. <clears throat> you're gonna have uh, about $210,000 in interest uh, for a new plant, about $800,000, I'm sorry, $800,000. I think those are swapped. One's principal, one's uh, interest, and it may be that way. I just don't have it in front of me. Um, of course, you gotta do the depreciation also. Uh, there's not a utility out here that, uh, that's about a four letter word in most utilities. Uh, because you got to pay for your project twice, basically. Um, so you got to remember that. And then all the other stuff, you know, the water line extensions, the water tanks, it's going to be rehab booster tanks, and all that's over here. It's pretty miscellaneous when you start looking at it compared to having to do a, a tank, I mean, a water plant, something with your water plant. So that's the slides I've got. Um, some of the things I want to talk about, and that's why we had a work session is right now y'all have uh, the way your rate structure is set up, y'all only have water rates for inside and outside in the residential all the way across the board and wholesale. Um, our rate studies that, we, that we've done over here, um, 
these are based on across the board and that's kind of um that's one way to do it you just do a, a a typical increase across the board um you don't differentiate if you have a rate study uh, and you do it correctly most places most utilities have residential commercial industrial and wholesale so you can start uh, charging different rates for different uses um, that's one way to do it uh, also on your wholesale side that's going to be something y'all need to to talk about um, as far as increases there i don't know if you want to hold what you're charging your wholesale customers it's about eight percent of your uh, revenue on the water side so it's not tremendous uh, amount of money um, that you're doing but also there comes a point that if you charge um, other utilities um, too much they'll find another way to get water from another utility so um, that's something you got to keep in mind uh, I've done a I, I, it's not an AWWA way to do it but most people want to look around uh, who's next to them and around them and see what their rates are um, I did that it, uh, also for y'all but it's that's really not the way they want you to do it. Uh, they really want you to do the calculations on what it costs you to make a gallon of water and what it costs you to get it to them and, and then put an overhead factor in it and profit and you know the whole bit. It's uh, for all the bean counters. But um, right now y'all are charging 363, I think is what you're charging. Um, for instance, some people around us are charging four and a half. Some people's charging 318. So, you know, you're probably in, in the range. I mean, you're in the, the medium range. If you do a 10% increase on a wholesale, you'd be looking at $4 a gallon. So um, um, that's just something you need to keep in mind, whether you want to do a, a rate change across the board, if you just want to do it on uh, residential customers, um, of course, residential now is all we've got to, to show. We don't really know. We know how many customers y'all have. Y'all got like 180 to 190 commercial customers. Um, but we don't, there's ways for Tommy to get the data to us that we can see what your revenue is just on those. You've also got the prison. Uh, I wasn't able to get that data yet. We're in the process of getting it to see what that percentage of y'all's uh, revenues are so there's you've got a contract with them I'm pretty sure though right Tommy there's a contract with them right now well uh, the prison yes yeah it, it was modified here a couple years ago but uh, there's just I think there's some points of it still left we couldn't touch one item on a per thousand cost but we was able to make some changes I'll have to look at that to make sure. I'm not sure. Oh, the, the first uh, 40, 42 months was under a special rate. And yes, we, that's correct. We but changed I, it. After yes, y'all changed it after that. So y'all got that rate set aside also. Uh, CCA has got a rate. And of course, residential, if y'all want us to, if you want to set up a new rate schedule where you're actually billing um, residential, commercial, industrial, wholesale, and the prison, uh, we need some guidance on that because we can actually show you if you projections on that or if you want to keep it the way it is and just keep a residential rate for everybody, then we can do projections like that. That's kind of what the work session is to kind of see how y'all want y'all system to go. I, I don't feel like it's um, the engineer's obligation to force y'all in a direction or give you one direction to go. I mean, uh, I can give you all the pros and cons uh, on, on what to do. My, my if, question on that, what, what is customary? What, what is most normal? Most normal is there is more, um, there's usually residential, commercial, industrial, wholesale. That's, that's your industry standard around just about everybody so um they usually separate those if you're a ud you can actually designate different zones at different rates 
Uh, however, being a municipality, they will not let you uh, differentiate zones. You have to charge, in other words, residential. You have to charge every residential customer the same. You can't say uh, the, the ones over there in Cato is going to pay a rate and everybody else gets Then how do we have the difference now? How do we have the difference now? They're, the two they're rates. just across the board. Do I? They're across the board. They're correct. I thought rural paid a higher rate. Than rural, rural can. Rural and inside can pay different rates. It's zones. Correct. That's only until you can separate inside the city and outside the city, basically, is how it usually is for a municipality. Y'all are a little different because y'all are under one body, but um, I'm pretty sure y'all are having to abide by the municipal guidelines and not the UDs. UDs are a for-profit corp uh, corporation, so they give them a little bit more ways of making money. Uh, I guess a little bit more leeway there on how they can bill their customers where y'all are, um, I guess, technically a taxpayer type base situation. So they put limits on you. Hey, Evan, um, when you did your population increase calculation, could you, well, give us a little detail on that. And the reason, what I'm asking is if you took from 2017 to 20. 22 whatever our population increased a huge percent of that is prison population which is not going to reflect the actual average um, you know what i mean yes the way we've done this is not on population the way we've done our projection here is based on water usage so we're projecting your water use out not on population uh, projection how you, uh, what is the what is the basis of the usage then? Uh, history. So you're taking what you've done on average since 17 to 2021, and you're feeding that curve with a polynomial. So again, a huge chunk of that is prison popular, prison usage, which is not, that's not going to increase at the same rate. That's a one chunk. Um, you know what I mean? That's probably your jump up between 19 and 20. I mean, I'm sorry. 18 and 19 or somewhere in there. Right. So if you and discount that correct. change, that would be a more accurate and reflection that's why of usage if, in the future. And if you see a polynomial curve would leave that one out. Um, so we I'm feel not like, enough of a mathematician. Yeah, we feel, like 1. 9, we feel like 1.99. We feel like 1.99 is really realistic because you got to think right now you're running almost 2 million every now and then. Uh, and again, this is not peak. So once you peak at at 1.35, I think it's basically y'all's peaking factor. Don't hold me to it because um, that's what the 30%, a 35% over your maximum daily is. You know, we're saying two six, you know, is what you would be in 41 if, if the peaking factor stayed the same. Um, I would not suggest going with UT's population. I mean, I just feel like that's way undercut. Um, and that's the only projections we got. So we have to come up with another way to project water usage or water demand. And also remember this has nothing to do with any outside sources wanting more water. Um, that's why me and Tommy was, uh, whether y'all build a plan or not, if you build one, it's our suggestion that you build it uh, where you can add capacity. Um, hey, Tommy, is it common to get in longer term contracts with our neighbor, Beth Page, where we say, you got we got to lock something in so we can build to accommodate you for the next 20 or 30 years? You can approach them with that and say, this is where we're headed. If you need something, now's the time to lock it in. It might go to somebody else. You, that, that happens in some utilities. You can make contracts with people. And we've talked about that with the regional concept. If we had to build a bigger plant, you would go to them and say, you're gonna to have to put up this much funds up front. It might be a million dollars, whatever it is. But you're gonna to have to donate that to this project to help us get going along. But that's that's contracts you would, and Don Skull said you would make these contracts with them. And that's how you, you'd have to give them so many years of service for that money. and. Uh, but that's how that would work. And you got to think there, you want to figure out what you're going to, that's where you need a real study, knowing what it's going to cost you to, to make a, a gallon of water and what you say your overhead and what profits you're wanting to allow. 
so you could set a rate that you're not going to come back in five years and be giving them water for free basically to finish out the contract so just out of curiosity um circle back to the prison question real quick um not that i think it's going to happen but i mean realistically it is a possibility that at some point cca could be gone the state could take over that prison what would that do uh they're still going to get water and sewer from somebody so they'd have so. to pay for it correct okay yeah it don't matter if it's cc cca running or if it's state of tennessee you're you are the utility so um, um now if you i guess there could come a point you could nosebleed them enough that they can make their own treatment plant and 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 uh sewer plant on site i mean you can but you're talking millions to build one. So, I mean, you can, you can buy and sell water for a long time, you know. <laughs> um, but, I mean, they're going to have to go through a whole lot to, to be able to do that because they're going to get permits to pull out of the cumber. They're going to have to get permits to discharge into it. I mean, so, I mean, there's lots of costs added to that. But there's always that. That's the only fear you got because you, you don't have the fear of another utility getting that contract you're not competing you are the sole provider and trial stool so um another thing we want to talk about on that um that is in this that we found so far is the way the budget is done y'all are combining water and sewer as we talked in the beginning right now you're getting about a million dollars uh from sewer that's coming to these numbers that you're seeing um so if we take and solely base sewer, um, if we put take the income from sewer helping the water or vice versa, water helping sewer, then this, this chart moves down uh, about a million. Um, so- We definitely need to see projections that include all this this is everything. everything this is taking sewer and water it is so in other words if you do a rate increase this is projecting what the increase would be on water side we have not increased it for sewer because that would be a separate we're trying to keep water and sewer separate so to get everything um if y'all want it to be still held together then in our projections we'd have to make sure that we done the same rate increase on your sewer customers and added that back into your revenues and vice versa. If you want to keep it that way, we can keep it that way. Most studies that you do and the way the state wants it seen is separated. They want to see water standing on its own and sewer standing on its own. We can just have one slide that shows them combined where we can make a good educated. Okay. Awesome. In doing the sewer, the way it's set up, we're going to have to take your expenses and cut them in half. So half goes to sewer, half goes to water. That's about the only way we can really do the way the the the, the budget's set up. Uh, of course, any sewer notes that you're paying will be included in the sewer side, vice versa on water. So we can separate some things. Um, so we'll we'll include the way that is. Um, I guess that's the only really real thing we we've seen. Um, if there's any uh, pop, any kind of demands that y'all think are going to come, this has, like I said, this has no projections of any type of large water or sewer user coming to uh, the industry side. Um, most of the time, if something like that comes, they can get grant money to help pay for infrastructure, but they can't pay for, for, for a water plant. So in other words, um, if you build it in a strategic way, you could always add capacity pretty easy and possibly they could pay for that, that section to bring it up, um, if that makes sense. Um, so there's some things we're not accounting for that could happen, but um, I would rather be conservative in, in the study than, than 
uh, doing the Field of Dreams, and we're going to build it, and they'll come. So um, I, you got to pay for it too. So you got to be uh, somewhat reasonable in your projections. Um, so if you phase it out into possible opportunities where we can get grant money, we might be eligible to acquire that grant money based on what each one of those pieces are instead of the whole project. Is that right? Uh, you talking about this kind of this slide here? This is only, uh, this would just be a loan for 40 years. Um, a lot of that goes in. So the SRF that y'all are been in the middle of since 2019 to build this tank, they're going to come in and they're going to want us to provide this data to them. They're going to have to see that y'all could pay for um, whatever you're doing, whatever kind of project you're going to do with them. They've, they checked and made sure you could pay for this tank before it got built with your rates. Um, that's one of the things they check. They, they check it, they come in, they say, nope, you're not going to get this uh, loan slash grant unless you change your rates. Um, I'm not saying that it's the right thing to do, but a lot of places will change them and then they'll turn around and get the project built and they'll change them back okay. to where it was. So I've got one more question. So when you're working on those rates, if you work it where it's based on a percentage or versus a, um, what if we looked at, a second option to for hard contracts for anyone that we were selling large volume water to and it be based on the cost of the water now what this would do is it would it may be a long-term 5 25 year contract selling water to a community but we would know what our profit is going to be for every every year and it's gonna be locked in, but we know it's a profit and we're not new, losing 25 cents per gallon each time. Does that make sense? It like does. a cost plus kind of contract. Exactly, yes sir. Sir, you wanna do away with minimums? I'm saying if you'll give us the option for both for hard contract, okay. I'm, I'm calling that on hard contracts for the option for both. Cause that's a large volume sale. To which one? Your large hard volume contracts. That's probably going to be your prison. I'm not sure because well, you only. Beth, you're talking about like the Beth Pay. The well, other Beth utilities. Page, all your UDs, you only sold them 52 million gallons. Um, last last physical year, you divide that up. It was about 120 thousand gallons uh, a day. So I mean, it's eight percent of your revenue. So we could do them, uh, but. You got 92% coming elsewhere. So um, that's what I'm saying. If you increase them a little bit, it's not going, if you, if you increase them a lot or if you increase them a little, it's not going to help your overall uh, net income. So they're, I'm not going to say they're negligible, but they're not. A lot of places sell a large volume of water to their neighboring systems. So it's, they have to be real strategic on how they do that in case, because a lot of times it helps pay for a whole other system. So um, if we build, I hate to use the term overcapacity, and we can sell water to others, and we get into a point in the future where if we don't get tied into loan contracts, we need it for our own uses, then we have that capacity and we can you know, quit selling to them if we need it. Correct. As, and if you get into a long-term contract with them, then you're going to kind of be obligated. And then all of a sudden you have explosive population growth and you see, you know, we don't have enough capacity to make water for our own people plus sell it to them. Uh, that, that would be the downside of the long-term contracts that I see. And, and, and I'm not saying I'm against it. I'm just saying that kind of the flip side of it. And I'm not saying we do it. I'm saying we review the numbers to see if it's worth a long time contract to, to review if we even, if we even pursue them for that obligation, because you're exactly right. We need to be obligated to the constituents and the customers in this area first. And that that's kind of the approach that we're taking with the prison or with the jail that we're looking at building is, it may be over capacity for our needs now, but we can fill it with state prisoners. But then when we have our prisoners that we need that space for, we boot them out and 
we have the space already there. So that's what I was looking at as far as the capacity. Uh, yeah, if we've got extra capacity and be able to sell it, why not? But if we need it, uh, I'd rather your, need it and have it than to need it and not have it. <laughs> in your contract, you can just make sure you don't guarantee them that capacity of your plant. Yeah, whatever this put whatever the hypothetical contract is, whatever language is in there, we'll just have to be careful to protect our, our futures. Correct, because a lot of times some places will guarantee them 80, you know, 50% of their plant capacity. So they know they're gonna always get, you know, if you build a three million gallon plant, they know they can get one and a half no matter what. So um, in some contracts, it just, it's a two way street. You know, they wanna make sure they can get it without, uh, being cut off at any time and they can't supply their customers too. So yeah, there's some negotiations that goes on there. I just don't want us banking on numbers that really aren't worth hold, holding on to if when you add them up, they're not worth it. Right. So. Correct. And that's kind of why I've done a rough math, 8%, you know, it's if, if you lost them today, it really don't kill you. I mean, it does not kill y'all's revenue stream um, as much as you think it would. Um, but again, we can't. Yeah, absolutely. So if y'all got any questions or anything, I'll, I'll take them, try to address anything in this report that we've got so far sewer i guess we do need to talk about sewer um most of this report's been on water because your sewer system was updated in 17 y'all had the last contract it's went to an sbr plant so your plant's pretty much uh good on capacity but you do have 60 percent i and i um in your system uh, with that being said that we'll come up with some recommendations uh our recommendation for sure is we've uh, applied for a CDBG grant to get flow meters into the system. Uh, whether you get that contract or, not, or that grant or not, we still suggest that that be done as a project. Um, if you get industry that comes in here and needs a large sewer um, usage, uh, and you've got 60% of it's just rainwater. If you could get that out, you'll have that much more capacity to give somebody without doing anything to your plant. So being proactive would be uh, beneficial. Um, that is not in any of these projections as far as expenses or uh, revenues. Um, like I said, what charts you seen was only water. We're trying to make them stand uh, on its own, uh, but we can combine them uh, as y'all suggested to see it. But um the cameras are going to give you an idea uh, not the cameras i'm sorry he's cameraing too but the flow monitors are going to give you an idea of what which line is the worst out of your system and you start with the worst and work your way down to knock out some of the ini pump stations energy usage out there's, there's lots of things to do there but as far as y'all's plant goes um you're in fine shape uh as far as it goes you just need to get your ini uh, situated in the next 20 years on the sewer system so i know i know it feels like we've shortchanged this on the sewer side but really uh there's not a whole lot you've got some lift stations that will probably need to be updated maybe over the years um between now and 20 years um but other than that pumps lift stations and uh i and i You stated that, that it was fine. Could you ex expand on that? What's good? Oh, uh, you are not you're not violating any overflows or anything due to your I and I. Um, you're not exceeding your capacity at this point. However, you need to get rid of sixty percent because the state does not want anything that high. So it does need to be addressed. Um, I guess my point is the state's not going to come in here and start pointing fingers. Uh, unless it gets worse. So uh, your main concern with the state right now is your water plant is at 80%. It's gonna take years to get it designed, uh, approved and built. So um, 
it don't happen overnight. So you might be at 80% now. If these numbers you see on the screen uh, is actually accurate and it's not um, some kind of uh, anomaly in the flow meter or the, the raw water meters uh, and the uh, um, finished water meters, uh, then you need to start addressing something here um, in order to do something. Uh, and that'll all be in our recommendations that's in, a, that's in the final report. Yep. Do we know with our current I and I, do we know about how much that's costing us each year to treat in electricity? Uh, I could do that. I could do the mathematics on that for you. I've got the data. So yes, 60%. Um, I would say I could do the mathematics on it. Um, yeah, I could probably do the mathematics on it. It's based on your average daily flow and things like that. So, I mean, it's it's going to be a, an estimate, but it'll be a pretty good estimate. Um, once you get, if you was to get flow meters in the system, then you could actually really pin it down um, because that would give you a day by day flow and you can compare, you know, every time it rains what it actually does in gallons. But um, the formulas they use for the states, the same formulas we'd use, and we could figure out, you know, what it's costing y'all to treat so many million. So yes, I can tell you what it cost you. Now you're gonna have chemicals and and other things that goes with that, pumping it to plant, and, but it would be a rough estimate. We do have that the state's original estimate on that sixty percent. They had a number on the cost too. We, you can, I'll give that report to you if you don't already have. Just for argument's sake, what do we spend a year in electricity? Uh, around 180 something thousand dollars or more. Depends on the rainfall. Rainfall, more rain, it's more. Not to sound silly, but can we possibly look at the feasibility, the viability of Maybe solar power when we build a new plant, or at least partially solar powered, or some 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 alternate source of energy. Well, there's actually maybe an option. The mayor might know more about that than I do, but our neighbor's about to build one beside us. Is that right, Mayor? I can neither confirm nor deny. Lebanon's got a bunch of uh, solar solar panels by their uh, treatment plant. Strike that from the record. The only thing about solar, you could probably run, you could run part of your plant stuff, but a lot of that stuff takes three phase power and large loads. So um, a lot of that's still going to be a, uh, a heavy user. Evan, just, and I know we're, you were years away from this, but just generally as far as water plants go and some of this, I know you talked about if you built it more energy efficiency to reduce your carbon footprint and all that kind of stuff. I guess is right now for the size of our plant we're looking at, is it really cost effective to look at those or is it, you know, some of that stuff's gonna be more than it's really gonna save us? All that goes into your life cycle costs uh, with the state. We have, to, we have to prove that. We have to prove what technologies we're using. Um, we gotta prove whether a conventional or a membrane, um, UV type, I mean, there's, lots of different ones that you can go with. We gotta, we've got we actually got to do uh, a uh, cost analysis on all those. Um, at three million, the only thing you're doing is all your pumps, you're gonna put VFDs on them. I think Tommy's got a lot of stuff converted over to VFDs now. So um, that conserves about as much energy as you can do there. Um, you know, maybe reuse, you can't reuse your uh, lagoons anymore. You used to, so, you know, you could have some savings there. They won't let you. So, um, but yes, there's, there's a few things you can do uh, as far as making uh, a water plant green type structure. Um, but um, it's hard to make some things because like, like I said earlier, a lot of your, electronics on those are, are a heavy a heavy user as far as uh, 
the motors and things they're not small so they use a lot of a lot of power when they actually are working so You could do some, but the only benefit you get is uh, loan forgiveness. So if you're doing it, it would be something for that particular need. So <clears throat> eye and eye is not going to be, <laughs> there's nothing you can do there but fix lines. There's Now there's methods on fixing lines. There's, of course, uh, you can dig them up and replace them entirely. You can uh, CIPP them where it's uh, cured in place, where you uh, put a liner in it. You can pipe burst. Um, there's uh, That's about the three top methods. Uh, you can go in and rehab manholes. We've had a history with that. Usually they don't last that long. You spend the money, you get it, the problem fixed, but then it's right back. Uh, basically, they go in and they cement them again and things. So... Um, Just a question. If we go back and pressure test our manholes, can we not tell if that's where the leakage is and pressure check the lines with pick them off at each manhole? And I mean that would that would be a a cost effective way to find out where our leakage is in the system, existing system. Am I off base on that? Um, you can do that. Of course, Tommy's been video, and that's one way to find find things cracks um, uh, people's hit them uh, you can see things that way of course you can pressure test more than likely if it, it it's you know it fails then you're just hunting so uh, you can smoke them um, you've got to pick a dry period for it to actually work very well um, you're gonna have lots of complaints because it actually goes up in people's uh, homes if their traps are not right. <laughs> uh, they will call the fire department. Um, I think I know it's, got it's a lot harder to do that on existing lines than it is new lines. Correct. Right you just got to plug off everybody's service. Right. Uh, but I don't do that. Well, in the middle of the night when nobody's really using the service that much, hopefully. <sighs> Correct, but I think the way y'all system is, y'all don't have clean outs readily available on every customer. So that, therefore, Tommy can't plug those off to test. So you have to have it to where you can plug off each customer service to tire test the mains. But we certainly could do it on the manholes. On what? Manholes. Yeah, manholes. You just plug off the two mains and you put a vacuum lid on it. You run it. Is that a long way around about getting an answer? <laughs> it's a good way of finding people that ain't paying either. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, another thing you can do uh, as far as I and I goes is you can, when it comes a large rain, you can have uh, – the workers actually go out and start popping manholes from upstream to downstream, and you can kind of get a visual uh, analysis for a little bit of cost on uh, if that line has got a lot of nine eye or not. So that's one way to, to do things. But there again, you're usually standing out in a lightning storm doing it. Um, with, but that's one way you can kind of somewhat realistically see if a line is in, in not too good of a shape but it's real hard to quantify it if that makes sense so basically you can look down and say yeah that's an eight inch pipe running full but you know how many gallons is that compared to the next street over if it's running full so that's where the flow monitors really come in and and help you spend your money wisely so evan you have any more things you need us to answer on for you to move forward. Anything else you need us to answer on for you to move forward? Uh, your rates. Do you want to look at trying to separate them and or do you still want to leave it as it is and, and has been? Yeah, I, mean, I think I would like to see the the the, the normal 
arrangement with the industrial, commercial, residential um, structure. Is that what you were asking? Yeah. Yes, that'll give me some guidance on how to do these uh, rate increases um, and how to set them. So. And that'll just give y'all an idea and we'll give you, you know, in 5% increments. Um, and whether you want to implement it staggered, uh, if you want to implement it one time, um, no matter if you're going to do any infrastructure and we'll have graphs to show you, if you keep going, um, there's going to come a point that you're going to have to do something. Uh, just because your expenses and your revenues are, are getting pretty close. If it wasn't for sewer, um, you know, you're gonna be, you're gonna probably be closer than you think you are as far as um, being in the red. I would, uh, I'm assuming part, we look at doing, you know, everybody's going to no minimum or no minimum gallons. Would that be looked at in this to see what that does to you? Okay. Yes, we can. Just so they'll know what it is. Yeah, we can give you those. Uh, we'll base all of it off the AWWA standard on how you would actually do a do a rate study on that. But uh, you'll probably need a full blown rate study uh, before this master plan. It's the master plan to kind of give you an overview, but uh, you know, in order to to really see how your rates need to go, it would take a full blown uh, rate study where. Uh, we had to figure out how much it costs to treat a, a gallon of water and, um, you know, to pump it all the way to, I guess, Cato is probably the furthest you may pump it. I'm not sure, but. Yeah, if that full rate study is not planned as part of this, I think that's definitely something we need to see um, right. with, with this for sure. But we can give you an overview of a rough, but to fine tune it, you know, um, it takes a whole lot of of math crunching and, and data gathering to, to get that. Um, and I know Tommy knows he's looked at it. It's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good size book, but. I guess the moral of the story is, uh, if you do a little bit right now, then it'll buy you time to get a study to see what you need to do further. But um, if you're going to do any projects, you probably need to look at doing some part of an increase in order to do some of these projects that's coming down the road. Uh, whether it's just maintenance in your tanks um, and things, because cost is going up daily uh, construction wise, if that makes, I guess that's a lot of the master plans going to show you. Uh, and that's, we make, we, in, the master plan will tell you what you need to do immediately. And then we'll have long-term goals that you need to work towards in the next 20 years. But it'll summarize uh, kind of a step-by-step a -step of what you need to do um, through the next 20 years. It's a kind of an itemized type list. Evan, are we going to get into, and it could be a discussion here for later. I'm not sure how you're doing it, but. Uh, as far as extending lines into currently unserved areas, I know we did that um, feasibility study that you did in November, and there was discussion of trying to find different ways to measure stuff. Tommy and I have talked about, and I don't know if you can qualify, but those areas we would create, create a loop line. Is there a way to quantify what the benefits would that, that would be? And, and I give example. I know there's one out in uh, District 8, that if you do it, I think it's $330,000 or seven houses currently on it versus there's one on Starlight that would create a loop line. There's no houses on that section. However, it would create a backup line to the Trousdale Turner Correctional Complex where we did have last summer a water outage for a little while and you had 25 inmates with no drinking water, no water to shower with, go to the restroom with. And I'm concerned about if we have something that could happen again about, you know, prison ride or something. So I, I just don't know if there's a way to quantify anything of that. If you do know, if you could kind of let us know what that is. Um, as far as uh, redundancy in your system, which is what that would be, there's really no way to put a mathematical figure to it. You know, that 
you're going to benefit. It's more of a, just a operational uh, thing. So, I mean, we could look at things and say, based on the hydraulic model, here's a few things you could do that would cost, um, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that kind of comes back to whether you want to do that or you want to um, do some other projects. So um, there's no way to quantify it, though, to, to, to make it justified. The only thing you can justify it is, one, it's re making a redundant system. Um, and number two, the state don't like dead ends. So if you got some dead ends you want to close up, they like that, but they don't make you do it. So, um, but there's no way to put a, a math figure to it uh, that it's worth it or not, if that makes. So, what, what was our estimate on doing Starlight, Luke? I think it was around nine hundred something thousand dollars. Okay. Since it's going to benefit the prison as much as anything, why don't we just get them to pay for it? No, I'm serious. I'm uh, not joking. We can, I mean, we can discuss that's it with cheaper them, but... than them trying to build them themselves a uh, a huge holding tank or something. So, I mean, I don't mind approaching them with that. Certainly don't, even if they paid half of it. Correct. That's what I was going to say. Maybe a joint venture. So I hope this is beneficial. Uh, I, I wanted y'all to see it. We're not done, but I don't want to get too far gone and then it not be what y'all was, uh, the end result, what y'all was expecting. So this helps me tweak the rest of it to make the final report the way. Uh, <laughs> I will say I was expecting no less than this. Well, good. Uh, uh, 20 millions, you know, that's steep. Um, there's no way around that, and it's going up daily, unfortunately. Um, it used to cost you about $2 um, a gallon to build one, uh, and five is probably, uh, probably, we feel like it's realistic, but there's nothing bidding out comparable at this point, so... Um, Last time we looked at it, it was going to cost $8 million. Now we're looking at $20 million. Correct. Uh, the one thing that I've tried to preach from my pulpit, my bully pulpit, yes, there's a cost for doing things, but there's also a cost for not doing things. And sometimes we lose sight of that. So right. I think being able to show that, that comparison will... Uh, open a lot of eyes to why we're trying to do what we're doing. Yeah, and uh, there's several projects, you know, we had. you got your normal wire and tire projects that you've done got. Um, you know, tanks you've got to keep maintaining, pumps, uh, lines that's going to eventually start uh, having lots of leaks over the years. I mean, you're getting probably pretty – pretty much you're probably, you know, 50-plus years on maybe some of your stuff. So, um there's no guarantee, you know, on those. Um, so there's lots of stuff. Uh, I'm no Debbie Downer uh, or not trying to be, but uh, main thing is you just got to look at um, trying to spread spread uh, spread out how to get uh, your revenues, and and you don't want to make such a uh, a jump either with your revenues. Um, and your projects. So you really got to see what projects you need and have the revenue to cover it. Um, I could get, like I said, Tommy's going to be on my side on this depreciation is just terrible um, because it's going to make you double, double your stuff. So it, it makes it look bad. Yeah. That's why I, when I give y'all y'all's budget information, I supplied y'all the last, the last four years of, uh, audits and if you look at the first about the first year i came here it's like three hundred ninety thousand in depreciation it's put, pushing a million now but that's because we're fixing stuff it, it keeps building up and that's what's going to push your budget to change and some of it will push your budget to change and those costs increase because anything we do buy build it got to be depreciated 
That's that's we we can't get out of that. It's a, that's they make us do it. So, is there anything out of the out of the board that y'all would like to see? Might be a little different that that wasn't covered in the summary up front. Hey, Evan, could you email us just a copy of those front two page, two or three pages? With yes, the, the summary the table summary, of contents. Just so we have yep. an idea what yep. maybe we can look at it. It's a okay. lot to absorb in 30 seconds. Oh, I understand. <laughs> yes, I can get, I can even mail that to everyone of y'all. Uh, I guess land use, um, y'all are down here more than I am, but um, is there anywhere that y'all see uh, that y'all, Y'all can do it by email or whatever, but uh, feel free to to send it to me and tell me what areas you feel like could could grow down here. Um, I'll try to take that into account as far as what we're looking at. I think y'all had another study. I don't know if they got into the land use, maybe what could become grow down here. So Well, we're doing our strategic planning right now, but after that, we're hoping to go into our comprehensive development plan and that we should be looking at it in that phase, but off the top of my head, I would think whenever 141 comes through, you're gonna see development on that side. We're starting to see, I mean, we've already seen a lot of growth on the Eastern side on 231 corridor. I think you can continue to see that. We're seeing more commercial interest on that intersection at 25 and 231. Starting to see more commercial interest in on 25 coming into town from about blank and ship on in. Um, and then of course, you know, we're seeing these different housing, uh, high density housing developments coming in inside off of 25 inside, but it used to be town of Harsel city limits. Um, so uh, right now it just seems like anywhere you can find 20 acres or so they're plopping down high density residential neighborhoods. And I think that's going to continue. Uh, but, you know, again, that's what we're looking at in the comprehensive development plan because I am concerned about our infrastructure capacity. As you already said, we're, we're hitting 80% on the water treatment plant. Hopefully those, those numbers are off given on the monitoring equipment, but let's just assume they're not. Then we've got issues with infrastructure, particularly Highway 25 and all the developments we got coming on. I'm hoping maybe we can get TDOT to do a traffic study. There's also a federal grant out there to do a safety planning. And I'm hoping to work with TDOT to see if we can submit something to the feds to do a safety study from 25 to 31 intersection all the way down to where 141 is gonna come in to see. Cause you know, we got two school zones through there, a commercial district and all these things. Of course we're competing nationwide. So I don't think our chances are too good, but if you don't apply, you don't get it. But the, those are some of the main things I see, but most of the growth, as far as going to be that high density one, it's going to be off the major highways and some smaller ones here and there off on the, I guess, the art. You're going to have to help me there, Mr. Jewel. I, I can't remember the difference between an arterial and a collector. I've never gotten that straight, but it's some of those, like you get off of, say, Fort Blunt or Hall Town, those kind of things. If you stay closer to our existing urban services, that's where you see them or your high residential. And as you get further out, it's more single family homes, more spread out. The thing that's limiting that right now is, is availability of infrastructure, primarily sewer. Um, if, if you had twice the uh, map of lines on the ground, you would have easily three times the development you're having. That's the limiting factor, uh, particularly with your larger, larger developments. Uh, and your commercial developments. That's what's, that's what's strangling our commercial development is the availability of services. Uh, and it doesn't even have to be a high user. You know, it doesn't have to be a high volume user, but they have to have it period. And uh, where we go with that, I mean, obviously right now we need to be trying to before it's developed, put it in the put it in the ground on that 141 corridor uh, for sure. Uh, at least while that road's being built and developed and whatnot. We've got that two T dot, so they've worn me and Tommy out for about the past two weeks. So, uh, and that, and I will also add, I know I've talked to Charlie and Dan over ten, Power Tennessee Central that owns Powercom. They've been concerned about our 
our capacity on the sewer side, given our high I and I, I know we're taking up, that's taking up a lot of capacity. So that has affected us in recruiting some industry out of Powercom, just given that capacity that we've lost on I and I. So the more we can replace that and give us capacity back, not just for the residential growth we're getting, but also that industrial growth. Correct. And the other thing I didn't touch on that I just remembered is your all's water loss. So you're sitting about a 40%. Does that sound about right, Tommy? Somewhere in there, 35, 40. Uh, the state would love to see you at a 20. Uh, we put in those zone meters. Um, I, I know Tommy's been looking at those, but um, it may be hard to find 20% in your system, but that right there would, uh, you know, that would save you a little bit on, on your 80% uh, capacity at your plant too. But um, sometimes it's just a lot of small leaks and, and nothing, you know, there's no magic uh one out there that you find that solves the problem unfortunately yeah just an example of that the crenshaw meter that goes up crenshaw out that area we fix a leak with service lines is what we're finding and it may be up at 50 gallon a minute one day and you go fix the leak it go down five gallon of that and time that pressure builds back up it's popped another one so it might be that it could be beneficial in one area just to change out all the water services to redo them. And that might correct because one water service can do five to 11 gallon a minute. And we fixed one, it went five gallon, come off the list, you know, right there. But then the next day or two, pop, another one goes out. And then you're, we had to go, that's what we've been finding in that area. Wow. It's just, you get one fixed and then another one pops. But I, like that, to me, if that keeps happening, that may be a area where you might decide I'm gonna just start changing out water services and because that's where we're finding them at. And it just may, the old materials just can't hold up to what the pressure is, it's just outdated. And uh, that, that kind of stuff's what we might run into. I'll turn it back over to you, Miss Bay. I added the budget to this, so if y'all had any conversation about it, either we added it to this night because I we thought we might have guests or people that wanted to talk. Um, so the next thing is that I, if you all probably received, I hope you all received the email I sent last night letting you know that the budget and finance committee meeting uh, at discussed the Hartsville Trisdale County Water Sewer Board's budget and it was rejected. The conversation was uh, can be found on Facebook uh, 3420 between 5834 in the minutes. Um, I, I've listened to it, um, I've seen it actually. Uh, they have called a special called meeting in that email I sent you, I wrote in there that it's Monday at five. It's actually 5.30, not five o'clock. And I apologize for that uh, discrepancy. Uh, and we are recommending that any of you can, they can make it be here. Uh, our regular scheduled meeting is not until the, fo to the following evening. So, and this is a work session. So we technically can't even discuss what we're, what we would to change to a budget or anything like that. I think it's just critical that we all be in the know and be aware of um, of what their standing was is that they rejected it. Um, anybody have any questions? Mr. Jewell, do you have any comments or statements based? Um, I noticed that there's not anyone here in, from the budget and finance and you're part of that committee, or I didn't know if you were here standing double, we're in two hats tonight. To I'd be glad them. to, I'd be glad to address it. I am chairman of budget and finance. Uh, the mayor was there, Tommy was there. Tommy did a, I thought an excellent job of trying to explain uh, or to try to answer the questions. I, I will say that. Uh, the big issue, I think, was, uh, and Mayor, please correct me if I, if I get, misspeak, I'm, uh, 
the biggest issue was the percentage of raises compared to what we think we're going to be at with all the other departments. That was an issue. I think if, if that, if it was just to say, we're going to match whatever the county does with the other departments, then I don't think that would be an issue. Um, I, Cause I do think that we are doing uh, some increase. It won't be quite as much maybe as what uh, water department was planning. The other issue that's been an issue in times past, and I have brought it up before the board before, uh, is the question of bonuses. Uh, there again, the water department doing bonuses when other departments are not. And uh, it's not that we don't want the water department to have them. It's a question of fairness. We don't want to have them when others are not getting them. And I know we can come back as a water board and say, well, you know, y'all need to do it if we're wanting to do it. But there, I assure you that that's not the mindset of this body. Uh, I believe that was the biggest and really the only issues that were, was there anything else, Tommy, that you remember? I think, I think so. that was the two big issues. Um, I think, I think we need to realize uh, that we are a part of county government. We are a department of the county, whether we receive tax funding or not. And uh, that's the way it's looked at, that's the way it is, I, in, at least in my, I think we've, we've had to challenge that in times past and I don't wanna see a big challenge on that again. But I think, I think simply put, take the bonuses out unless the county gives bonuses to everybody. Like we did this last one with the uh, ARPA funds, we gave you the funds so that you could give all the water department people a bonus didn't come out of water department funds um, and try to just make the, the increases, uh, at least for this year, uh, to mirror what the county is gonna do for everyone. And other than that, I don't, I don't know of any issues that were voiced. Mayor, can you think of anything else that was really voiced or was a sticking point? Uh, the only other thing was a small one and that was the fund balance statement that included the value of the assets because they thought that, you know, you got that much money. No, that's the value of the plant and lines and everything else like that. But that, that was a small part of the discussion. It didn't take up very much time, but that's the only other thing I remember there was any kind of serious question on. And I, th I think there again, it was the way it was presented. It was presented more as a balance sheet than a budget. Uh, what they're used to looking at is uh, revenues last year, anticipated revenues for the year coming, that bottom line expenditures, what you had last year, what you budgeted, what your actuality is, and what you're budgeting on expenditure side. And as far as assets and all of that, really doesn't play into it. It's revenues and expenditures is really what they're looking at. And I think all that other information may be complicated, complicated it uh, needlessly, but uh, and, and I'm not saying that we need to necessarily change it this year, but maybe in the years to come, I think that would be uh, a little, if it's formatted the same way that the other departments are formatting it and what they're used to looking at. We're used, I should say we, we are used to looking at. I understand the, the, that they're used to seeing something in a certain way, but this board has not taken it underneath our positions that we thought that we had to go and figure out how every other department was doing their business to do our business. Um, and I believe us coming forward with all that information was so that we were transparent with absolutely everyone. Um, the difference, one of the big things is that a water board and a water and sewer board, they're a little bit different than, and I know you know this, Mr. Jewell, that a lot of times you can't change a line item 
like you can in, in most municipalities or city governments. You just can't say, okay, this money's in here. We didn't spend it. I just want to change it to here. Well, we have money that's allocated for this, and this is the only place it can be utilized. So that's the, that's exactly where it has to stay, and we can't we can't we can't alter that. So our intentions with that was to be transparent with the county commission, and we voted to support the amazing team that provides the water for Hartsville Trousdale County. Uh, the, the individuals show up to work every day, um, each day, tending to the the needs of this community. And that's why we voted on this. And I know you were there that day. Um, and this was not, this, the budget that we in, turned in would, was, I think the other thing is, I think a lot of people thought that this was going to impact community, the taxes. I think, I think that people think, oh, well, their budget was higher their pay pay increase was going to be higher so i think that's going to, we're going to that's going to be taxpayer dollars well it wasn't it what we submitted was actually based on the budget for for us doing business for the cost of doing business and taking care of the employees that we have and we were asked to come back and be fair and now we're asked to be fair to who we stand up here and speak for as a board and I'm, I'm so concerned about us going back to these staff members and saying that it's fair that we now take away what we wanted to stand up for you. So this, this puts us in a, in a very fickle position. And, um, but I do want the community to know that this had no bearing on taxpayer dollars, that this was not going to be a rate increase for water, that this was truly based on the previous rates that we already had. And, um, that there was no, we, we were under the understanding that they were gonna go with the wage study too, is, is what a lot of us were under the understanding. So we thought we were gonna follow suit and take care of our employees. Um, we can't make a decision on how we're gonna change this tonight, but if anyone would like to speak on how they said they can speak tonight. And so anybody has anything else? And, and, and I'm certainly not trying to be argumentative and I didn't I did not mean to say that the board did anything wrong in the budget that they put forth um, other than the, the, been asked repeatedly not to put the bonuses in there because we weren't doing it somewhere else as far as the percentage of increase I get it personally I thought that's where we would fall with the county uh, so I didn't think when I first saw it, that it was anything that was excessive personally or in my position as chair. But obviously my sentiments in that respect were not shared by these other people. Um, but that is the issue. Uh, I do think that this board is a function of county government. Uh, it is not autonomous. You have no power that has not been given to you by the county commission. I'll, just like a county has no power on its own other than it's given to them by the state of Tennessee. So, you know, they can vote next meeting to dissolve this board. And I don't want to see anything like that happen. And I'm not threatening that. Sometimes when I bring up things that could, everybody thinks it's a threat. It was not meant as a threat. But realize that this board and our water department is truly a department, regardless of where the funding comes from. We have other departments that their funding comes out of their fees. Now, building and zoning, their fees ex far exceed what their expenditures are. I know it's a different animal. Schools, different animal. Highway department, different animal, because they are all regulated under state law as to what you can, can't do, or how they are to be addressed. Um, I, it begets the question that I've been jumping up and down about for the three years that I've been on the board. Are we, are we a department or are we a utility district? Everything I can find says that it is a department of county government. And the county commission granted authority to this board, set up this board, enlarged this board at one point in time, 
to have the the day-to-day -day operations it specifically says set rates in several things uh it doesn't specifically say set salaries it doesn't specifically say that your budget is not subject subject to review by the county uh maybe that needs to be more clearly defined uh, we made an attempt when I first come on board to try to define that, and we had a further resolution that tried to define some of those duties to clarify that. And uh, I wasn't necessarily involved in the doing of that. I think it could have been carried a little further than it was. Um, but I don't want it to be an us versus them from either side. And I'm just a man in the middle for a few more months. But um, I, I feel like I feel like we need to be sensitive as a board that we are a department of county government. If that's a request, if there's any way we think we can do it, we should at least consider doing that and be done with it and move on. But um, you know where that raise is going to fall, uh, they cut it back to nothing. Uh, we tried to get it back up to two and a half percent and point of order. It wasn't necessarily on the agenda, so we couldn't do it. So I'm sure that'll be one of the first things that are done in our meeting Monday night. And that's one reason that I called another meeting Monday night at 530. So we could address that. Uh, we do have this budget that has to be approved. Um, even though it doesn't affect our overall budget, it is part of the budget process. Um, there are some other departments that we're gonna to have to go back and tweak uh, with some minor changes that have cropped up and nothing is locked in stone on the budget. The budget is simply your best guess of what your revenues are gonna be and how you plan to spend it. It can be amended at any time, even the budget that we're putting forth on the first reading there's three readings of it required by the uh, charter and it can be amended up until the, the very last and third reading. So uh, it's not that it's anything that has to be done tonight, but um, I, I just, I don't want to move. I don't want it to be picked apart. I don't want, I don't want, everything in there being questioned, you know, when there's only two, two areas that are being questioned. So I, I think that's, that's where we're coming through with the commission and, um, or at least budget finance. Uh, we can, we can present it the way you have it. The full body might, you know, vote to approve it. Um, I doubt that happening since you, have a, a majority on budget and finance of the commission. And that's one reason I made that, that committee as large as it was so that we didn't get down to the end and it get blown up that all the discussion and decisions could be made uh, during that process. Uh, but I'm one voice, but that's, that would be my best suggestion to resolve this issue at this time. Mayor, do you have any further thoughts on that? Did if I'm way out of line, you let me know. I'm going to respond first if I can, just to so you, I mean, your comments. And do know this wasn't taken personal. I just I had multiple phone calls over this today and yesterday and last night, and there were quite a few people who did take it personal because they really did think that we were taking from the community's budget. They thought that we were taking from taxpayers' dollars and on I, the commission. Commissioners? Not commissioner. No, no, no. Constituents in the community called very concerned that we were pulling funds from taxpayer dollars for this for this pay increase. So uh, that was my intent tonight was to let people know it's not that we're a division. We are we we realize that we we're in this village together, that we are a department and that we do bring the budget to the county commission. But we brought this to the county commission because we had to vote before they voted. We had been told by multiple county commissioners the way that they assumed, we apologize for assuming, as they assumed, what direction it was going. And we, we went that route. 
and then also that this was not a reflection of increasing the, the wages. It wasn't impacting the taxpayer dollars. And it's not, my, my intent for that moment that I just took a minute ago was not about the division. It's about the fact that we were not um, impacting the taxpayer dollars. That, that That's what I wanted to say. That that's the division. It's that the division of the funds is what I, is what I really wanted to get across just a moment ago. That we're not we're not pulling from the taxpayer dollars for any of any of our pay increases on this. So that's where we were coming from on that. Um, and not to be indifferent or different, but just to just to state where we were. Mayor, you can go ahead. Yeah, I'll just reiterate, and I think Mr. McFarland did say while during the budget hearing that the water and sewer department generates its own funds and it pays out of the water rates, it doesn't get any taxpayer money. Um, but I, I just will address two things, and I think it's because he got two different sections of the ordinance that we passed in 2020, where it says the water utility board will fix the salary of the general manager subject to approval of such salary in the annual budget approved by the county commission. So there it lays out that the budget has to be approved by the county commission. But then you've got the last sentence, uh, section in, it says the general manager will fix the compensation of the employees of the county government's water and sewer department. So it does say we will fix the salaries, but then you got this other section that says the annual budget is subject to approval by the county commission. So I think that's where you've got the, the different felt thoughts come in. And as far as the, the, thought, the thought that it was pulling taxpayer funds, I haven't received that question. I have spoken to some, some people just generally about the water department and how it operates and how it works on it as an enterprise fund. And I explained what that is, but I didn't receive any comments after the meeting. I, I have no doubt that I'm sure probably several of you did. So, so I, I, can't, I can't really address that part. I have talked to people about the water department in the past about how it generally works, but those in all honesty were before we had the budget hearing where this came up. So. Uh, my history and I've always worked for a municipal government, you know, either a city or first time here a county, I guess you might say. Uh, and the municipal government I worked for, uh, you know, we were part of the city department. We were like we are here, we have separate funds and it's divided from the rest of the city. It was run by board, that board decided all of that decided their wages for their employees, their benefits in that. Y'all do that here, the benefits. Uh, I guess uh, there's even a court case years ago that uh, stated that uh, all the, the board at that time had to do was to submit a statement to the, to the city officials and that was all they had to do. To submit a statement, they didn't have to defend it. Uh, they give them their financial statement. And they submitted a budget with them, but that was the extent of their reach into that community, into that entity, you know. Uh, the money couldn't be touched for anything else. They tried over the years, the police department tried to get a hold of it. To, it can't be done, it can't be done here. The county can't take it and put it in something else. It can't happen, it's, Ill, it's an illegal action. Uh, and it may be how this is governed, it's, di it, it's, it's different. Uh, but that's kind of where I'm used to. We, we, had, we did have the autonomy to the board made that decision and they raised their own rates. Y'all, and it's in there that you have the right to raise your rates. And a lot of times in that, raising your rates is covering the cost of even employees. So I don't, it seems like those, it's, it's just a, it's, it's odd to me that y'all would, I don't understand how we're not di similar to the, those, the Bill Scruggs department or even the schools and that they get different, they're different funding then, then they do have funding that does come some from the county, but we receive no funds from the county. We get grant money passed to us, yes. And that's how that function always has been for any municipal government, like or how we, how we operate in the utility. We can't get grant money when we, in, the, in the municipal utilities usually can't borrow money. That all has to come through the county. But even at that, we, we were never held hostage or uh, had to fall under any specific desire of anyone else. And that may be how, like I say, that's my, and y'all may have a better understanding of this, go how this is governed. It may be that that's different altogether, but I would have thought we would have been more like a little more independent, like 
the highway department or even somewhat the school system. I don't think anyone's trying to grab the water department's money. And I don't, number one. And uh, number two, I don't think anybody's trying to hold anyone hostage. I think it comes down to a question of fairness and the other employees and the rest of the other departments, how come they get it and we don't get it? And you don't have to answer that. We do have to answer that. And I think the simple solution to that, if you are a department of the county, that you try to be respectful to the request of the commission when it comes to personnel, bonuses, and raises. They've not asked you about rates. They've not asked you about how many people. They're not asking you about what trucks you bought. They're not trying to micromanage you. They're trying to make a level playing field across all of the departments. I know I'm trying to do that. And I think that is, that is the, the crutch of it. Now, if you don't think that is applicable, um, we can, you know, we can fight it out. Um, it may not be. I mean, my opinion, my understanding, my research may be, you know, totally erroneous. But I assure you that I'm not the only person on the commission that feels this way. And I have not tried to instigate this. This is this has come from others. And I've tried to absolutely make them aware of the difference that it is not apples and apples, but it is still on the same tree. And I think that's where that's where the issue lies. And if, if we need to have a showdown between the commission and the water board, uh, there are plenty of these people up here that are ready to do that. I'm not one, I don't want that. I will try to do everything I can to keep that from happening. And by me asking you to try to respect their wishes in these two areas, I don't think is bad. I, I, I just don't see it that way. You may see it that way. And uh, I'm sorry if you do. Um, I, I don't want to see us. We've had one department last year that we're going to do what we want. You can't tell us what we're going to do. And we were challenged legally. And then they found out, oh, yes, they can. And I don't want that to happen again. But if that's if that is the course that we need to pursue, I assure you there's enough of those people that want to do that. They will do that. Uh, I won't be around to do it. I'm, I'm going to the house and let y'all fight about this in a few months. But right now, I'm still a man in the middle. Um, I thought that the budget would be OK. The only thing I saw that would be a sticking problem was the bonuses. And um, I had cautioned us. I wasn't at the meeting when the budget was adopted. Y'all did that without me. I apologize for not being there. I couldn't walk in the building. But uh, I think, you know, that's the situation. Whether it's warranted, whether it's right or not, that's in the eyes of everybody sitting here and everybody at home is listening and every one of these 20 people that have been elected to try to run the county government and the other one, the mayor. And, um, I, you know, I don't know what more I can say. Uh, that are the two issues. Uh, that's the rationale behind the issues. Whether you agree with it or not, that's pretty much, I think, where they're gonna be coming from. Uh, and I, I just hope that it doesn't become a bigger issue. And like I say, um, sometimes, you know, you're rocking along and if you do what somebody asks you to do, maybe better than rocking the boat, I guess. I don't know, but uh, I can't, I, that's all I've got to say about it. And I'm sorry if I've, if I've spoken out of turn, if I've offended anyone, uh, if I've been sounded argumentative, I apologize. That's not my, that's not my, not my desire. It's to 
resolve the situation. That was my suggestion. If y'all got others, do what you think is right. I'm but one vote. Well, and I apologize if I didn't mean to be antagonistic in what I said. I just asking a question. I just giving you an example and asking a question. That was it. it was meant to be no thread in it at all. That, that's all I want to say. Well, I'm always antagonistic and my natural state is argumentative. I have nothing but respect for the body of the county commission. However, if this commission feels like this board should respect their authority, then I respectfully submit that this commission should trust this board to do what it was created to do. Um, I understand that there may be some members of this body that would more than happily dissolve this board. That's what they want to do. They got it to do. But each one of us is here. I feel like each one of us puts in the time, is conscientious about the work we do. We're not just haphazardly blowing ratepayers' money. The fact that we can afford to and choose to give bonuses to the highly trained employees that we have and would like to keep, I feel like is our prerogative. Now, if other departments don't feel that is fair, as I have previously stated, then it is incumbent upon those departments to find room in their budget or create room in their budget to likewise reward their employees if they feel they deserve it or they want to go that route. I'm all about being fair. But at the end of the day, this board has a job to do. The county commission should respect this board. And likewise, this board should respect the county commission. I'm not trying to get into a peeing contest with anybody. But right now, as we have discussed before, our most valued asset that we have in this county are our employees. Because you're not going to replace them right now. There is no labor pool. They leave, they're gone, and there is no replacement most likely. And when you have employees who are highly trained and doing certain jobs, technical jobs, there's a big cost associated with having to replace that person. And I'm gonna venture a guess to say it's a whole lot more than some little bonus we might try to give. Now, I mean, as far as this, this commission goes, I, I mean, they, they're gonna do what they're gonna do. I'll gladly come Monday night and try to plead our case. We might find somebody a little more eloquent, a little bit milder tempered than me. But at the end of the day, we were put here to do a job and we are faithfully trying to do that job. And I just feel like every time we turn around, whether it be you, Mr. Jewell, or any other member of this commission, we're being torpedoed. And there's only so much that somebody's going to sit here and so much abuse they're going to take, so much work they're going to put in just to have it kicked back to them every time. I mean, because if they're not going to take our recommendations, if they're not going to trust us to do our job, then why are we here? What is the point? If they know so much more, if they were so much infinitely more wise, why don't they do it? Let them go sit through the most boring eight hours of training I've ever had in my life. I'm gonna venture a guess that most of the commissioners haven't even done their commissioner training. And while I'm on my pulpit, I'll just bring up the fact we got commissioners can't even be bothered to show up. I'd like to see some of them's attendance records. But end of the day, like I said, they're gonna do what they're gonna do. I'm not trying to be combative. I'm just trying to state facts. We're here for a reason. They trust the school board to run the school, to make good decisions, to be good stewards of the school's funds. I mean, maybe I was wrong. I just took it as an assumption that we were here for the same purpose, but for the water department. Now, my opinion is if 
you can't trust people you got working for you. You don't need them working for you. I'd like to uh, maybe correct something, some language that a few people have used. Um, salaries and bonuses in particular are not gifts. They are employee retention tools, as anybody in business knows. Um, Mark said a lot about it, that what we're attempting to do with the salary rates, the increases and bonuses, is retain the employees that we have working for this department. Um, and I think a lot of people, myself sometimes, we forget what's really going on here. This, this is a business in a way. We're a water department. We process money back and forth. What are humans' basic needs? Food, shelter, everybody with me, water. We are providing what I would say is probably the most essential service in this entire county. There's no sheriff's department if the toilets don't flush. There's no EMS building if the toilets and water don't flush. There's no schools without showers, toilets. There's no government if there's not water at the houses of our residents. Um, this board, the reason I voted happily for the salary increases, the, the bonuses is to, to retain the employees we have. A lot of these guys can drive 30 minutes to Lebanon and get a better paying job tomorrow if they wanted to, maybe with less manual labor and everything else. Um, we're, we're lucky to keep the skilled guys we have right now. Um, as Mark said, and everybody said, it's the commission's prerogative to vote on budgets how they like. I voted for the salary increases and the bonuses to keep the employees we've got. And I think it's a critical, more critical than just about any other position in this government right now, because this is not an automated water system we have. If we don't have guys out there in the field and in the water plant, the person treating the water that goes into the mouths of every resident of this county, um, you know, what's the point? I think it is absolutely critical. And I hope that, uh, the people that make decisions are not too short-sighted to see the importance of that. Thank you. And just one last thing, I'm not saying that the water board should not be under the oversight of the commission. I don't, I want that to be clear. Every department should have oversight. There's, there, that's, that's to me, that's a critical part of any, any government entity. So I don't want it to be misconstrued that I feel like we should be just left to our own devices and do what we want to do. That's not what I'm saying at all. All I'm asking for is to give respect to the commission, which I do have. I would ask the same respect in return to trust us to do our jobs that we were asked to do. And I feel like everybody in this room puts forth 110% trying to do just that. Whether we agree on everything or not, I don't think I've ever walked out of a meeting where we voted on something that wasn't unanimous that I still didn't feel good about whether I voted for it or against it. I trust each person in this room. God knows everybody in here is smarter than I am. To be honest with you, I've always said that's what makes me smart is I know I'm not that smart. So if you would be so kind to please make that clear to the commission that I'm not asking them to let us be the Lone Ranger over here and do, our, do what we want to do. But I was just raised that you get what you give. I will say that this, this is going on, not just with the water department, I mean, we're in the same thing with Sheriff's Department, with EMS, with streets and sanitation. The mayor, you know, we have been advocating for more pay for these people all year. We've been trying to address it. You know, I'm on that side of the issue. You know, I, I'm, I'm just a spokes, I'm just a spokesman. You know, it's like, don't, don't kill the messenger for the message. And uh, it's not necessarily what I want when they rolled it back to zero, I voted no. You know, I, it's not, I'm like you. I, I, I agree 100% with what you're saying. 
I was just trying to, they kicked it back. This is why. And, you know, uh, if you don't want to change it, send it back up there. What will happen then? I don't know. I really don't know. I can't say. Uh, I, I just, I don't know. But I understand both sides of the issue. Believe me, I sit on both sides of the issue. I do understand both sides of the issue. And, uh, you know, I have my personal beliefs. I will vote my beliefs. Uh, but that's you know, my convictions. But uh, I appreciate what you said. What you said about the two-way street is 100% correct and right on. And I can't agree with that more. I can't. But there again, which side of the street you're standing on is... I guess, which side of the streets you think you're going to live on. But anyway, that's, um, that's the situation. How we rectify it, what we decide to do is up to the board. And uh, I don't have any magic crystal ball. Uh, I don't have any, what if we do this? What if we do that? Uh, I, I, I don't have that. And uh, I was surprised at more than one thing that came out of the budget hearings. It certainly wasn't expected. It certainly wasn't necessarily uh, what I would like to have seen happen. Uh, I would like to have seen this budget presented and passed and move on. That's what I've been trying to do. I want to try to get us a budget passed on time that we can all live with. And uh, I there is there are issues and that's the issues as far as my understanding if there are others they were not voiced so on a scale of one to ballistic how mad do you think they'd be if we increased it and sent it back to them we can't do that tonight i don't know Over like under. i say i i didn't i didn't i really didn't think it would be an issue I don't think I don't think the raise is as much an issue with most as the bonus. I just know I've heard idle chatter about raises in general for county employees. Um, they all deserve it. I don't care what department they're in. I don't care what job they do. I don't care what their function is. They deserve it. Now, we can't compete with everybody. That, that, that's, that's, that's common sense. That's common knowledge. We, we don't have the funds. But at the same time, we are experiencing unprecedented growth, which does bring more money into this county, but also increases the workload on the county employees and makes them even more valuable, more vital, more critical. I just, I just feel like we're, we're cutting off our nose to spite our face if we don't take care of these people. Not to mention the fact that as your workforce ages, if you're not bringing in younger people to replace them, they're going to age out and you've got nothing. So you got to make something attractive for these kids when they come out of this high school down here to think, I want to work at the highway department. I want to work for the water department. I mean... I just feel like there needs to be longer term thinking going on. It's not just about this budget. I mean, there's next year, there's five years, there's 10 years. I would just really like to see this county, this commission show its employees that they are appreciated and they're, they're vital. The intent is not for us to be on one side of the road or the other. It's not for us to actually um, be combat, you'll, to combat with the commission uh, at all. I believe tonight we're just speaking our mind um, and to let you all know where we come from because we, we have that opportunity for a voice. 
I hate, I hate that I feel that you interpreted it that way because um, that was not the intent. The intent is just so you know where we were coming from and um, that there were some mis, um, misinterpretations of where the funds were coming from and questions that were being brought forward so that minds might be opened. Uh, we do have a new generation and this department itself has multi-generations that work for this department. And to lock in the longevity and the growth and the future of this new generation that does not hold a, that doesn't, doesn't have history and cherish um, sentiment to this community that wants to stay here because of that alone. Um, situations like the budget that we presented, presented an opportunity that we felt would hold on to some of the youthful individuals and all of the generations that work for the water department. So on behalf of the water department uh, board, I would like to, the water sewer department board, I'd like to ask you all, let me know if, um, if there's anything I can do, if you would like to meet again, um, the work session is at 530 on Monday. I'm asking for you all to be pre present if you can speak your voice to the special called meeting. Um, I'm not hearing. Um, uh, and I, I do, I'm not saying that we won't review this. This needs to be the very first thing on our agenda for our meeting, our, our meeting on Tuesday night. Um, but if you've got any questions, feel free to give me um, an email and let me know. And um, anything else? Work session and this hot room is adjourned.